Frank Sinatra, transcribed as Rocky Fortune. NBC presents Frank Sinatra, starring as that footloose and fancy-free young gentleman, Rocky Fortune. Hi. Ever have somebody try to make a monkey out of you? I did. Not that I minded so much until I found out that it was a dead monkey. Talent unlimited. Sorry, Mr. Bunsen's tied up. Thank you. Uh, pardon me. Yes? I'm looking for a Mr. Martin Bunsen. Mm, What is it, please? Well, the employment agency sent me over. My name's Fortune. Rocky Fortune. Oh, you're the fellow for the paid companion job. Yeah. You wouldn't be the party that's looking for a companion, would you, honey? Not at the moment, Mr. Fortune. Go right in. Thanks. Keep your switchboard open. I'll be back. I elbow my way into Marty Brunson's office, which is a cheap, smoke-filled bin with furnishings by the Collier Brothers. Behind a stack of papers with a telephone on each ear is Marty Brunson, a sharp-looking, dark-haired character, combination publicity man, talent agent, promoter, and tout. On the leather sofa sits a long-legged blonde, about six feet tall. Takes a few seconds for me to cover all that ground, even with my 20-20 vision. But it's time well spent. Secretary said I could come in. Sit down. Marty will be through in a minute. Thanks. What? Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, Harry, it's a deal. Hang on a second. Uh, Hey, come in. Sit down. Hey, you're looking great. Hold on, Harry. Mindy Lane, this is Mr. Uh... Fortune, Rocky Fortune. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Uh, Excuse me a second. Harry, now listen, about the publicity on the guy from Mars picture, I'm working on the Chamber of Commerce for a full-dress Martian day in Central Park. We stage an invasion with midgets, see? Maybe we can get Orson to MC. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Okay, Harry, if the price is right, you go ahead with that other matter. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so long. Well, you're looking great, Fortune. Put on a little weight, huh? Now, let me see. You're here about... Uh... A job. A what? A job. Yeah, well, it's been nice meeting you. Keep in touch with the office, huh? First thing it breaks, I give you my solemn pledge... I'm not a performer, Mr. Bunsen. The employment agency sent me. Oh, oh, that job. Well, why didn't you say so? What do you think, Mindy? He's cute. You got eyes. <laughs> okay, Fortune, you're hired. Sixty a week, less ten percent to me for getting you the job. Uh-huh. Who's my employer? Me. Take it or leave it. I'd like to leave it, but I'll take it. Okay, report to the television studio tonight at 6.30. What studio? Well, Miss Lane's, of course. Oh, I get it. You're the Mindy Lane who's got the TV show every night. Star of TV, video, and television. You ever watch the show? Well, my set ain't working. In fact, I don't have a set. Now, be on time. Do you mind if I ask you what my job is? Didn't the agency explain you're a paid companion? To Miss Lane? To the senator. Which one? Oh, this boy's pretty square. He's almost a cute. He hasn't seen the show, Marty. Just a minute. I'll get the senator. Uh, where is he? He's asleep in the closet. Oh, excuse me. Senator? Hey, Godfrey, come on out. Now, uh, Mr. Fortune, this is Senator G. Godfrey Jiggs. Senator, meet Rocky Fortune. <laughs> Senator G. Godfrey Jiggs turns out to be the biggest chimpanzee I ever saw in my life. Suddenly, I remember that this oversized anthropoid is the star of Mindy Lane's daily TV show, and I have signed on as his valet. Godfrey removes his miniature Hamburg and comes over to me for a quick sniff. Before I know it, he's greeting me like a long-lost relative. All right, down, son. Here, down. Oh, oh. Don't fight him, Rocky. He likes you. Easy, boy. Here, stop that Come here, Godfrey. Come on. That's a good fellow. Oh, isn't he sweet? Yeah, if you like apes. What do I have to do for this character? Just pick him up at Mindy's apartment every night and make sure he gets to the studio on time. Then you take him home. It's only a couple hours work a night. Where do I start? Right now. Here's his collar and his leash. Take him up to Miss Lane's apartment on Fifth Avenue. Here's the address. She'll meet you there in half an hour. Will he come with me? 
Oh, he's very affectionate. He likes you. Oh, sure. Okay. Oh, and uh, Fortune. Yeah. Be careful with him. He's worth about a half a million dollars. Oops. I leashed the chimp and we make it down to the sidewalk where I flag a hack. There was something definitely crazy about this job, but the hours are good and the pay's okay, so who am I to complain? Why two? 45 Fifth Avenue. Now sit back, Godfrey. Hey, uh, who's your friend? TV actor. Hey, that's the monkey I seen on Mindy Lane's program, ain't it? Uh huh. <laughs> well, what do you know? Are you his trainer? I'm his father. Now, how about watching the road for a change? Look, you turn on your job, I'll turn on mine. The hack drops me off at Mindy's apartment and the doorman shows me which way to go. I get the key in the door and open it. Mindy's got guests and they ain't very polite. Okay, shut the door. Sure, anything you say. Would you mind taking a howitzer out of my spine? Back against the wall. All right, okay. Lily. Yeah? Take care of him. Okay, Harry. Now, just breathe deep, honey. This ain't gonna hurt one bit. Not the guy, idiot. The monkey. Oh. Say, can I put my hands down? I'm getting a little tired. He's tired. You're tired? Yeah. Okay. Take a rest. Harry drops the barrel of his cannon across my head bone, and I spend the next 20 minutes pounding my ear on the broad one. When I come to, there's a sweetest smell in the room, like a hospital. And through the haze, I can make out the puss of my very good friend, Hamilton J. Finger, sergeant of the gendarmerie. Take it easy, Fortune. Take it easy. Oh, they forgot to lower the gates. What gates? At the railroad cross. What hit me, a local or an express? You were sapped. Where's Godfrey? Godfrey? The monkey. The monkey? Wait a minute now. I'm beginning to remember. I walk in as a mug with a 45 and a tough-looking babe. They clout me, and that's all I remember. Marty. What? Look on my dresser. It's a note. Here, let's have a look at that. Here, Oscar. If you want the chimp, it'll cost you five grand. Don't call us. We'll call you. Hey, it looks like the ape has had the snatch put on him. What do you know? Did you get a good look at the guy who slugged your fortune? The guy was about eight feet high with hands like mauls. The woman was a little on the tired side, if you know what I mean. A lot of mileage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll send out an alarm. Well, you've got to get him back, officer. He's the star of my program. We'll do our best, lady. Hey, you know, something just occurred to me. Yeah? How did those people get in here? Miss Lane had a new lock put on that door only yesterday. Who has the key? Just Miss Lane and, uh, Mr. Fortune here. Just a second, Uncle. Back up. Whoa. Well, it is peculiar, you must admit. What about that, Rock? Sure. I arranged the whole thing. I snatched the ape, and then with a quick twist of the wrist, I slugged myself in the back of the head. And while I was unconscious, Okay, okay. Knock off. Oh, it could be an inside job. Mr. Fortune here might have arranged with the crook. You want to get belted? Now, listen, you... Now, hold it, hold it. Shut up. The boat is. I'll send out an alarm. Meanwhile... Nobody leave town, you understand? Before you go, I'd like to say a word to Mr. Fortune. This'll be clever. You're fired. Thanks. I stagger back to my flat and fall into the sack with the radio playing soft music. Just as I'm starting to dream about Mindy Lane, something brings me out of the clouds. And now for five minutes of news. Well, every TV set in the nation will be focused on Mindy Lane's cocktail hour tonight when the glamorous mistress of ceremonies makes a nationwide appeal to the kidnappers of her co-star, Senator G. Godfrey Jakes, to return the simian snatch victim to Mama. What could have been a disaster for the show has been turned into a terrific publicity stunt by ace tub thumper Marty Bunsen. Says Mr. Bunsen, quote, The evil scar-faced man and the strange woman who overpowered her keeper and kidnapped G. Godfrey Jakes will be brought to justice. Miss Lane appeals to them to treat the animal decently. He must be fed only special foods, and he will not eat from the hands of someone he doesn't like. We appeal in the name of... Keeper, he calls me. I shut off the radio, and it suddenly dawns on me that my former employer, Mr. Bunsen, was talking to a guy named Harry when I first walked into his office. And a guy named Harry slugged me in Mindy Lane's apartment. Also, Mr. Bunsen is making too much hay out of this monkey snatch. I decide to pay him a visit in his apartment. The phone book is a name in bold face type, an inch high. Well, what do you want? 
You owe me half a day's pay. Not counting the time I spend on my face in Mindy Lane's apartment. Come to my office tomorrow. I need the cash. How dare you barge in here? Get the dough, pal. I'll wait. Now listen. Get the dough, buddy. All right. Stay here. Sure, I got all night. While he goes into the back of the apartment, I take a quick look around. The living room shows nothing, and I decide to follow Mr. Bunsen into the bedroom at the rear of the setup. I tiptoe along the hall and manage a quick peek through the keyhole. What I see is enough to make me open the door in a hurry. Now, get out of here. Well, well, You well. miserable sneak. If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, what a tender right, scene. What do you want, Fortune? I want to know how come you got Lane's pet monkey sleeping in your bed like he was a crown prince. Well, it's, it's all a publicity stunt. Uh-huh. I cooked the whole thing up with Mindy. You know, chimp gets kidnapped, TV star desolate. Uh-huh. Look, I'll pay you well. I'll give you $100. I got a lump in my head where Harry dropped the hardware. All right, 150 You know something, Marty? It just occurred to me that maybe this is a publicity stunt. And then again, maybe Mindy Lane isn't even in on it. What do you mean? I don't think you're above clipping your own client for five grand. Oh, now, don't be ridiculous. Suppose we phone the little girl right now and find out. All right, all right. She needn't phone. She's on her way up now. Swell. I'll wait. There. That must be Mindy now. wonder what kept her. You get it. I'll stay here and keep an eye on the anthropoid. Marty Bunsen goes to the other end of the apartment to answer the door, and I wait inside the bedroom. I hear the door open, but nobody comes in. I wait a couple of minutes longer and decide to take a look. I exit from the bedroom just in time to get it again. Same spot. Snap out of it. Come on, come on, come on, come oh. on. Come on, come on. On your feet. Yeah. Did you get the license number? Yeah, uh, very funny. Whew. You know, the top of my head is beginning to feel like the Anzio Beach at H plus one. I suppose you got a good alibi cooked up this time? Same as before. I reached around and hit myself with a crooked sledgehammer. Hey, the monkey's gone. Uh-huh. Bunsen did it. He waited behind the door and socked me. He's the one snatched the ape for the show, Sarge. Now, that's almost as good as your alibi, Rock, only it won't wash. Why not? Because Marty Bunsen is laying on his back in the living room with a knife in his throat. I am in trouble. Marty Bunsen is spread out in the living room like an hors d'oeuvre with a toothpick in the middle, and my friend Sergeant Finger thinks I had something to do with it. I try to explain about my visit, but the sergeant can't see it my way. It's no use, Rocky. That story is full of holes. So is your head. I'm telling you, it was a publicity gag. He was expecting Mindy Lane just before he got killed, and the buzzer rang. Rocky, and I... you know, let's go down to the clubhouse and talk this over with the lights on, huh? Sergeant, you ain't going to pin this on me. I didn't do it. Maybe I ain't going to pin it on you, Rock. But it won't be because I didn't try. Now, come on. Okay. But before you go... Yeah? You're leading with your chin. <laughs> I'll see you later. I figure I'm cooked anyway. I may as well try to catch the killer before they have me served. Next stop is Mindy Lane's Mink Line Cave on Park Avenue. What's Rocky? Mind if I come in? Oh, I don't seem to have any choice. Well, what brings you? Is there any news about Godfrey? As a matter of fact, there is. Have they found the kidnappers? Sit down, baby. This may come as a shock to you. Well, he isn't dead, is he? Who? Godfrey. No, Godfrey's all right, but his man Bunsen ain't doing very well. Marty? Why, what's wrong? Mindy. Yes? Now, cut out the baloney, baby. What do you mean? I mean that you know as well as I do that Marty Bunsen is dead because you left him with a knife in his throat. No, no, I didn't. You did did go to see him about an hour ago. Well, I... Come on, honey, I was in the other room. Well, then then you must have killed him. Don't be silly, I was in Never Never Land. Whoever stabbed Marty also conked me. That wouldn't be you, would it? No, honest. Let's have your version. You did go to his apartment, right? Yes, I, I did go to Marty's apartment. The door was unlocked. When he didn't answer, I walked in. I saw him lying on the floor and I got panicky and ran. Marty and I cooked up this whole monkey business as a publicity deal. Now, how could I explain that to the police? Who do you think killed him? I don't know. Mindy, honey, one of us is in trouble, and as much as I like you, I'd rather it was you. But I swear I didn't do it. I... Who can that be? 
Let's answer it and find out. Hello. If you want the monkey back, the price is now 15000 You got three days to raise the dough. We'll call you again. I must have a lot of dimes. Who was it? The party who killed Marty Bunsen slugged me and stole the monkey. What? Now all we got to do is find him before he finds us. Maybe we better call the police. Oh, sure, sure. Look, you stick right here. They'll call back with instructions. Well, where are you going? I don't know, but... Hey, wait a minute. Mindy, when you and Marty Bunsen cooked up this publicity gag, you hired a couple of hoods to do the snatch, right? Well, Marty hired them, not me. You know who they were? I'm afraid not. There was a big guy named Harry and a woman named Lily. Marty ever mentioned them to you? Harry? No, the only Harry he ever mentioned is a... He's a television actor, Harry Peterson. Mar- Marty represents him. Harry Peterson. What kind of parts does he play? Mm, mostly menaces and heavies. Well, that's an awful long shot, but maybe it's worth a try. What is? It just occurred to me that Marty might have hired an actor to snatch the monkey. And that the snatch might have given the actor some ideas. Like what? Like going into business for himself. I'll see you later, baby. <laughs> I make a fast call to the talent registry and find out that I can reach Harry Peterson at his flat in Greenwich Village. I subway down and find a number. It's after midnight, and the house is a five-story movie set from a Humphrey Bogart picture. The mailbox says fifth floor, and I start up. Yes? Remember me? Oh. Mind if I come in? Thanks. Shut the door. Where's the ham? Ham? Harry, the menace. He's out walking the baby. At ten minutes past midnight? The baby couldn't sleep. Sometimes fresh air helps. Uh Uh-huh. Now, wait. Uh, Look, Mr... Fortune. What we did wasn't very nice, but we needed the money. Nice? Lady, I've been sapped until my hair hurts. Harry hasn't been working much, and when Marty Bunsen offered him $100 to stage that monkey business, he took it. He overacts, doesn't he? Look at his lump in my head. Well, he got scared you'd yell for the police. That doesn't explain why he stuck a knife in Marty Bunsen and took the chimp away again. What? You heard me good. Mr. Fortune, you're mistaken. We left the monkey with Marty. Why, I didn't even know he was hurt. Not hurt, lady. Dead. Oh, I swear we don't know anything about that, Mr. Fortune. I give you my word. I don't know if you're acting or not, honey. But I'll buy your story until the morning. You're going? For the moment. Give my regards to Barrymore. Tell him I owe him a knock on the head. This chick is no Eleanor Adusa, and I can see through a phony act like a cellophane bag. I make like I'm leaving the premises, but I turn up my collar and dip into a dark alley to wait for Harry Boy. After a couple of minutes, he comes wheeling along with the baby carriage in front of him, and I don't need a crystal ball to guess what's inside. Hey, Jackson. Uh, huh? Hold it a minute, will you? What do you want in there? In case you ever want to rock your baby to sleep, here's a rock. Oh. Hairbreadth Harry drops like a pole ox, and two minutes later, I'm making like Hamiltonian down the avenue toward Washington Square with a baby carriage hitched behind me. After a couple of minutes, I pull up lame and flop down on a bench in the park with some oxygen. The monkey's fast asleep in the carriage. Drugged, I figure. Oh, boy, let's take five. Uh Uh-oh. Hey, mister, do you mind if I sit down? Oh, sure, help yourself, Sal. Ooh, you got got a bromo? Never touch it. Oh, baby, yours? I'm minding it for a friend of mine. Wow, congratulations. Thanks. Hey, do you mind if I take a look? Easy, Dad. Oh, that's a nice little, little bitty. Yeah! Steady, boy. It's a, it's a, it's a, you pardon me. Hey, Pop, you forgot your bottle of Tiger Sweat. Uh, keep it. I, I think I've had enough. <laughs> you can chalk one up for the Temperance League. Come on, Junior. We better get out of here before Harry the Horse shows up. <laughs> Woke up, huh? Let's go, kid. Hold it, Fortune. Well, speak of the devil. Get him up. Anything you say. Let's walk. Any place in particular? Home, James. And one peep and I'll ventilate your spine. You're driving. Move. You can't get away with it, Harry. Even if you get the 15 grand for the monkey, they'll catch you for Marty Benson's murder sooner or later. Not me, Jack. You. I don't dig it. 
You're going to be found on your face with a handkerchief that wiped the knife in your pocket. It still has Marty's blood on it. That ought to be very convincing. Keep walking. My feet hurt. In a couple of minutes, you can get off of them for good. I never figure myself for a guy who'll die pushing a baby carriage with a monkey in it, but here I am. I slog down the avenue with Harry's 45 caressing my sacroiliac trying to figure a way out. The street's deserted. We reach the alleyway alongside the house. Okay, punk. Leave the baby carriage here. Okay. Turn around. All right, all right. Walk down the alley. You won't feel a thing. I'll give it to you on the fifth step. Move. My legs won't work. Walk. Another step. Three more steps. Giant steps or baby steps? Go on. Look, couldn't we talk this over? Okay, punk. That's far enough. So long. Oh, 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 my arms, you killed me. I'm bleeding. You'll be bleeding worse if you try to get away. Doc, are you all right? Let me get out in the light and I'll check for the leaks. Phew. For a minute, I was afraid that... Lady, I've been afraid for 30 years, but this tops it all. What brought you? The lady here called the cops. We traced you to Peterson's apartment and his wife broke down and talked. I figured we'd lay for Peterson downstairs. You know he killed Marty Bunsen so he could get the monkey? Yeah, his missus spilled the whole thing. If you two are okay, I'll take this boiled ham down to headquarters. Let's go, Harry. Rocky. Uh-huh. Where's Godfrey? Probably stopped in a baby carriage. I think they drugged him. The carriage is empty. What? Let me look. Holy smokes, a chimp was in there a minute ago. Where could he be? Well, here comes the man. Let's ask him if he's seen Godfrey. Okay. Hey, Mac. You was a dresser, man. Oh, we're not going to get any place. Hey, you're the fellow of the baby. That's right, Dad. Uh, I got news for you. What's that, Dad? If you're looking for your little boy, he's up there hanging from the lamp post. <laughs> NBC has presented Frank Sinatra as that footloose and fancy-free young gentleman, Rocky Fortune. Others in the cast included Gene Bates, Alice Backus, Jerry Hausner, Herb Vigran, Nestor Piva, Gloria Ann Simpson, and Barney Phillips. Tonight's script was written by George Lefferts. Andrew C. Love directed. Eddie King speaking. Now to tell you about next week's adventure, here's Frank Sinatra as Rocky Fortune. Did I ever tell you about the time I got mixed up in the plot to murder Santa Claus? Well, sir, there I was, just hanging my Christmas stocking when the police decided they'd like to hang me. I'll tell you about it next week. Yeah, see you around. What do you buy when you buy Christmas seals? Well, here's how Christmas seals helped one person. Bruce Malone was as healthy looking as any man on the block. Worked for a contractor operated one of those air hammers that dig up concrete. One day, Bruce saw a mobile chest X-ray unit in his neighborhood. He stopped in. It was free, only took a minute, and after all, he bought Christmas seals every year. A week later, he got a call from his doctor. He learned that he had TB, tuberculosis. Because Bruce discovered TB in the beginning when it's easiest to cure, he'll be home from the TB hospital soon. While he's away, Bruce is learning a new trade, less strenuous, to complete his rehabilitation. Christmas seals help to make all of this possible. That's what you buy when you buy Christmas seals. Protection for yourself, your family, your community. So if you haven't answered your Christmas seal letter, won't you do it today? Visit with Fibber McGee and Molly tonight on the NBC Radio Network. <laughs>